<laughs> Good evening. We're going to start this meeting. I know it's 6 o'clock, and I want to make sure that we're out of here at a reasonable time for y'all. Um, so we're here, we're here tonight to talk about Barney and Mazel. If you're here to talk about something else, you might be in the wrong meeting. So. Barney and Mazel. Uh, we got a project this year, and we have a prime contractor, Peters. Peters Con Construction. We got Severance Construction, Severance Electric Company as well. This is really two projects lumped into one. Um, we have the Barney Road project, which takes place from Nichols back <coughs> to Douglas, and then we have a signal job uh, right out here at Douglas and <coughs> Mazel, as well as West Nijin Mazel, Burdick and Mazel, and Riverview and Mazel. So it's really two jobs packaged together. For inspection on this, we have our Good guys over here at Hubble, Roth, and Clark. So if you see the white trucks rolling around on site, that's them. They'll be inspecting for us. And then myself, Jim Hoekstra, with the Road Commission, Kalamazoo County. So if you need a point of contact, that'd be me. My card's are over there. Or flag them down, and you can get a hold of me one way or another. So a little bit about this project. So Barney <coughs> is about a $1.6 million project. Uh, as many of you know, we've started. The road was closed today, and uh, they're cutting trees. Um, the mazel job is about a $900,000 job, and uh, it started back on March 3rd. So if you witnessed any of that, um, as I know the church has, uh, it's been very exciting. So we've been pouring foundations, all kinds of good stuff. So both of those projects, we have Barney wrapping up, expected on September 1st, just in time for school. And uh, Mazel, probably a little bit later in October, and we'll get to a little bit why that might be. So a little bit of information about these two jobs. Barney, again, Nichols to Douglas. I'm sure none of you can read the road names on there. Um, basically features a resurfacing job. So we're going to come through, we're going to mill and repave the road. There will also be some shoulder widening to create a consistent roadway width. I know there's some areas where the shoulder kind of weaves in and out a little bit. We're going to correct that. We're just going to make it consistent the whole way. There will be some storm sewer replacement, uh, primarily on the west end up there near Nichols. Uh, there's some old storm sewer we're going to go through. We're going to replace some of the pipes and the structures. And there is a section down here at the bottom of the hill that we're going to fix up too. So some storm sewer work lumped in. Uh, spot installation of curb and gutter. So we will be doing some curb and gutter work throughout. Uh, primarily at the intersections. I know Nichols will get some. We're doing some ADA ramps there for pedestrians. Um, so that, that'll happen. And then guardrail, obviously signs, pavement markings. And then on Mazel, for the signal job, we are replacing the signal here at Douglas, full replacement, and it will have the new mast arms as you've seen elsewhere. Uh, we did one just last year at Nichols and Grand Prairie, so it'll look very similar. Um, it'll look like Burdick Street as well. And then we're going to do the same thing at Westnage. That'll be a full replacement at Westnage. And then the other two, Burdick and Riverview, just some minor equipment upgrades. So you might be asking, how was this project selected? Why are we out here? Uh, truth be told, it's, this road has really been 30 years without a paving job. Now, there was some paving back in 2009 on the hill just a little bit there, but for the most part this project hasn't been touched for about 30 years. 92 was the last recorded instance. Since then we've chip sealed four times, 96, 2001, 2008, and 2018. So we've done some preventative maintenance to get by for those 30 years, but it's due for another course of paving. The Road Commission does use a mix of fixes when we do projects, so oftentimes you'll see us doing our chip seals. Uh, that is preventative maintenance. The chip seal, the crack fill, all of that is just preventative maintenance. The rehabilitation, which this one is, it's uh, milling and resurfacing. And then the biggest jobs are the reconstruction projects. That's where we're taking the whole roadway away, we're bringing it down to gravel. Probably the most recent one you would have seen would be on Ravine. Uh, that was probably three or four years ago now. Um, that was a reconstruction job. So we do use a mix of fixes depending on how bad the condition of the road is. For this particular job, impacts to traffic. I'm sure you're all very interested. Um, I know I was when I arrived on site this evening and saw wooden barricades up. Uh, Barney Road will be detoured. There's no doubt about that. When we're doing the storm sewer work, it's going to have to be detoured. 
Uh, we're going to be putting tubes across the road, pipes. It's, it's going to be detoured. And it'll probably be for a period of about, about a month, maybe a little bit more, um, depending on weather and materials and that kind of stuff. But the detour will be Nichols Road to Ravine to Douglas. Uh, there is also the uh, improvements down here at Douglas and Barney. Uh, we're going to be doing, I said, some storm sewer work. One of those is going to necessitate ripping up across Douglas. So there will be a short duration detour, but it will be very long. Mazel to Westnage to D to Douglas. We will try to minimize that as much as possible, but that may occur for a week or so. Local traffic will be maintained. So for those of you living on the site, we will provide you access to your house. You will always have access. Um, I can't guarantee from which side it's going to come from. Depending on if they're putting a tube across the road, you may have to come from the other side that day. We will try to get out and notify you as much as possible. HRC will be on site. Um, usually we do a very good job of communicating with residents when this occurs. Emergency vehicles will have access all the time. We'll make sure that we can get those fire trucks, EMS, into the site. Work is primarily from 7 o'clock a.m. till 7 o'clock p.m. So you'll see us for the full day. So what to expect? Well, first, mailboxes. Mailboxes will have to be relocated. We've already talked to the contractor. Um, they will take all the mailboxes from your houses and they'll locate them at one central spot where deliveries can occur. We are not sure where that is yet. We have not had a pre-construction meeting with the contractor, so we aren't to that point, but we do know that they will be relocated. Driveway removals. So during the course of work, we will have to remove driveways. There will be maintenance gravel put in. So you will have a period of time when you have to go over the gravel to get to your house. The other thing is, for those of you with concrete driveways, if you're fortunate enough there, you'll be getting another letter from us. We will be replacing those with asphalt. That is our policy. Now, the other option there, uh, when we get time for this, when, when the letter goes out, we can leave it graded and you can put it back as concrete, but we, we will put it back as asphalt. Temporary dif differences in height. So as work occurs, milling, paving, etc., there will be differences in height. There may be a lip at the base of your driveway, and that will be temporary. We will try to minimize that as much as possible. We'll do daily reviews with gravel. You know, we'll try to smooth it out as best we can, but be aware that may occur. Delays during paving. So those of you that have been around the paving trucks, uh, if the paver's going by, you're going to have to wait. There's going to be some delays. Uh, they won't be terribly long, but there will be delays. And then lastly, lawn and yard areas. When we go through and do this work, we will damage some of the yard areas. We will reseed those. We will flatten them out and make them manageable and mobile. But they will be a mess for a period of time. Um, additionally, if you have sprinkler systems in the right-of-way up close to the road, it would be recommended that you move those now. Um, we will come through, we will pull them out gen as gently as possible, but we will not be putting them back. Um, technically, those are not to be close to the road, so if you have them there, I would urge you to try to relocate those now. So as far as schedule, I mentioned we don't have a pre-construction meeting as of yet, so we don't have the contractor's actual schedule in hand. The best dates that we can put to this are pretty generalized here, but uh, I think they give a fair representation of what to expect. As I noted, signal foundations and underground work for the signals is pretty much complete. You've probably seen that going on already since March. Uh, we've been at that for a while. Tree work, that's this week. I just spoke to the guys today. They'll be done by the end of the week. So, Concrete curb and sidewalks at Mazel. So there's some ADA ramps there along with that signal. Uh, we're going to be replacing that concrete here in April. Storm sewer culverts, that work, uh, the contractor is expecting that to occur late April, early May. After that, they will roll right into earthwork and road widening. So just cutting out the edges of the road. We'll get to that in a minute. That'll be the next course, and that'll be uh, May to July. And then comes the asphalt milling and paving. So that'll be your July to August. And then finally, paved markings, signs, guardrail, and restoration seating. All of that will occur in August before project completion. Now, the only other one down here is the set signal poles and devices. 
So I mentioned earlier the project for the signals goes till October 15th. That's primarily due to the poles. The poles being fabricated, metal, uh, it's got a lengthy lead time these days and uh, it takes about six months to acquire it. So that's why we started back in March and we're hoping to get it set up here in, well, August, September, so it's ready for October. So walking through what to expect, uh, obviously trees are being removed. Anything that's going to be in the impact zone for the road widening is being removed. Anything that is dead or dying is also being removed. We had our forester go out there he verified any trees that are dead and dying just so that they don't cause a future problem falling into the road after the project's over. Signal foundations. Um, if you're fortunate enough to see this, it's quite the, uh, quite the event. Uh, they put in the casings, they poured the concrete. These are the foundations. They're about 20 feet deep that hold up the poles. So pretty big operation there. Uh, hand holes and conduit. If you've seen some of this, they've been setting the hand holes in the conduit, running all the underground work that they can in advance, trying to get the signals ready, so that all they got to do later is come in and pull the wire and put the signals up. Next, as I mentioned, the excavator is going to come in, and along the side of the road, they're going to trench and widen, as shown here. So they'll come in, they'll tear, tear out this little strip on the side of the road, and that we can then base back in to create a consistent roadway width the whole way. Storm sewer, uh, I mentioned that already too, but uh, this will probably take a lot of time and this will cause the most disturbance for, you know, um, again, primarily on the west end. As shown here, culverts, when they do cross the road, do require the full road closure. We try to minimize that as much as possible. We're going to try to reduce the amount of time this road is fully closed, but there will be an instance or several where it is necessary. So. On those days, look for us. We'll try to communicate with you and let you know you can't go out to your right, can't go out to your left, that kind of thing. Um, but just be aware that there will be days when that is occurring. Concrete curb, we talked about that a little bit. So we will be putting back the concrete curb, especially at uh, Nichols and Barney. Uh, I'm, a, I'm aware it's very tight there right now with that radius. Uh, we are widening those out. So that should be a nice improvement. Um, should allow you to make that turn a little bit more freer and make it a little bit easier for you turning on that corner. Asphalt, so wherever we're widening the road slightly, we will be placing the asphalt. We'll put the gravel down, we'll put the asphalt down. Milling, I'm sure you guys have seen milling before. Uh, it gets kind of dusty at times, but uh, uh, this will be a very important part as well. So they'll come through, make a lot of racket, and uh, we'll mill up the road. And then following that, place the brand new asphalt. Right. I forgot to mention this earlier in the schedule, but as part of the restoration, uh, we will be putting out gravel shoulders. It's per fairly consistent practice that we do put a gravel shoulder on the roads. Uh, this helps uh, for the drainage purposes as well as for the road structure itself. So we will be putting gravel along the sides. Uh, of course, signs, we try to take a holistic view, so we're going to replace any sign that's out here, make sure everything is crisp and clear and you can see it at night. And paint. Um, I guess if I can say one thing about paint, and I will, uh, is that uh, if you could please avoid driving through the fresh paint. I get enough calls throughout the year. Um, I'd really prefer you guys not be one of those. Um, it's a real mess to get off your car, and it makes a real mess of the road. Please just... If you see the cones out there or the trucks with lots of flashing lights and big wet paint sign, just stay back a little bit and give them some space. They'll be out of your way, generally speaking, fairly quickly. Um, just try not to drive through the wet paint. And then restoration, seeding. So we'll reseed your yards. If you've got a mowable yard now, we'll put it back as grass. If it's a uh, rougher area, we will put back the native seeding that we're used to seeing. So that'll be your wildflower mix, generally. Um, so we'll, we'll do the restoration based upon what was there previous. Signals. Um, so the poles will come in, we'll have them installed, then we'll put up the arms, as you see here, followed by the signal heads, and the wiring will get pulled at that time. And then, of course, we'll turn on the new signal, have a little celebration for five minutes, <laughs> take out the old one, 
and voila, brand new road. So uh, the new road will be great, uh, great for me. Um, the new road will be a nice consistent section. It'll be a nice surface. Um, I'm hoping you all enjoy that. Um, it'll have new drainage, hopefully alleviate some of the issues that we've been seeing and hearing about. I know on the west end we've got some areas where we've had service requests, ponding water, deterioration of curb. Hopefully this fixes a lot of that and makes the situation better for all of you. And then, we're warning you, uh, we will be back in one to two years to do a chip seal. Uh, we found that the chip seals do help the longevity of the road. So uh, it's a quite a sizable investment, obviously $1.6, but well, $1.6 million. But uh, the chip seal really helps preserve that. The asphalt will dry out, the chip seal helps keep it good and structure good. So it gets it to last a little bit longer, we found this, and uh, so we'll be coming back to chip seal it shortly thereafter the project. So you'll have at least one year of fresh asphalt. <laughs> and now, uh, we're going to talk about Douglas. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Rebecca. This is her project. This is future for next year. So I kind of get a little sneak peek of what's coming. Um, but this is Douglas City Limit to Mazel. Rebecca? Thank you. All right, so I'm Rebecca. Yes, we're giving you guys a sneak peek. Anyone here got the mailer regarding Douglas or are all of you here primarily for Barney? Douglas. Douglas? Okay, awesome. A couple people. So yes, Douglas Avenue, city limits up to Mazel, or 750 feet north of Mazel, technically. That's a project coming next year. And this portion of the presentation is just, uh, like Jim said, a sneak peek into the project regarding some changes we're doing to the pavement markings. So the project will have a mill and overlay, so there'll be a new asphalt surface and some storm sewer improvements, but this is primarily just talking about the changes you guys will see to the pavement markings. So right now on Douglas, you will see there are four lanes total, two northbound, two southbound, until you get about to the city limit and then you start to see just your one lane north and south in the center turn lane. So that is what we are proposing. So we will be staying consistent with that all the way up to Mazel. There'll be three lanes total, which will be the one northbound, one southbound, and center, to center turn lane with the widened shoulder. So you'll notice now because of the four lanes, there's really not much of a paved shoulder in some areas. So this will help to improve that and provide for that wider shoulder. Some examples, like I said, if you go further south on Douglas, you'll see this three lane section as you enter into the city limits. And then also Nichols Road has the same three lane section um, if you guys are driving on there. This is commonly called a road diet because you go to four, from four to two, three lanes. Again, it gives you that wider shoulder and gives you that center turn lane. So why are we doing this change? Well, it's because of safety, and that's what motivates all of our decisions, is safety. This is proven to reduce crashes and to allow for safer left turn movements. So that way those who are turning left can get into that center lane, and those that are continuing to travel straight can keep going, versus now if you're in that left lane, you could have to break or stop suddenly if someone's trying to make a left turn. So that was it. That's the sneak peek. Uh, here's the end of our presentation. I do want to remind anyone that came in late to please sign in in the sign-in sheets. Those are really helpful for us. If there's any follow-up questions that you guys may have, we have your name or number and email. That way we can get in touch with you. So it's really helpful to sign in. This slide is on RCKC Connect, which is our great communication tool that we have with the public. We've had it for a number of years now, and it's proven to be really successful. Residents can sign up for RCKC Connect, and you will get a weekly or sometimes more often if there's more going on, update on the construction projects going on in the county. You can customize it if you would prefer just to get your township or you can get all the projects going on in the whole county and stay up to date on everything. It can send you an email or text message. So whichever one you prefer, uh, that's what we can send you. 
You can also connect with us by calling our main number, 269-381-3171, visiting our website, KalamazooCountyRoads.com. That's also where you'll see our service request button. So if you ever have a concern or a question, if you go to our website, upper right corners, big yellow button, service request. If you press that, you can type in your name and your question and concern, and the proper engineer or staff member will get in touch with you to answer that question. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So if you're into the social media world, we're there too. And finally, we're located at the corner of Kilgore and Sprinkle Road. So if you're passing by and want to pay us a visit, we will be there. Or we're out in the field, one or the other. So now uh, we'll have comments, questions on either of our projects. Ravine Road, from the driveway of the school buses to Douglas. Who, who is responsible? Is it city or township? So, Rebecca, if I can. So first of all, um, if you ask a question, just beware. I'm gonna, I'm gonna state it back to you just so we get it on the camera. So this will all be posted online. So the question was, um, Ravine Road from the school bus, uh, school bus building, facility, whatever, down to Douglas, whose jurisdiction? That is city. the city of Kalamazoo. I think we have a little bit of the road from the school bus to the east, but generally speaking, that is correct. So who do we call because that road is atrocious? Yeah. I would call the city their 311 number. Uh, they have that on their website. I can pull that up for you afterward. Great. Or, or the public, uh, I think it's public works division of city council. No, I, I want a phone number. Okay. Thank you. Yes. yes. Before you begin tearing up that whole west end, Will you have all the supplies needed to complete that job? Oh, so we don't get too much in the supply chain. Whomever. <laughs> yes, um, we, we, as I said, we have not had our pre-construction meeting with the con con contractor yet. Uh, the anticipation is that, yes, everything needed is going to be on site. We don't want to have a situation where we don't have the piece of pipe that we need, we tear open the road, right. and now we're stuck. That would be a problem. So yes, we want to make sure we get everything we need. We've stipulated it in the documentation to them. The closure can only be for so long. Obviously, weather pending, that kind of stuff. But we're going to try to hold them to that as much as possible. Yes. OK, right now, on, if you're going north on Nichols, yes. and you want to turn right on to Barney, because they're doing the tree work, they have that closed, so you can't turn right onto Barney, and we can't come up from the bottom of the hill. So we have to wait for the traffic coming off of Barney to turn, <clears> and it's causing a problem there at the intersection, which is already a problem because yes. there's no light there, you know. Yeah. So I, I forgot to rephrase your question again, but uh, to your point, yes, the question was uh, there's a bit of a difficulty, I guess, with the barricade down yeah. at Nichols and, and Barney, Barney, and it creates a problem for traffic. Uh, yes. Okay. I happen to come from that way this evening. Yes. And so I happen to see that firsthand. <laughs> it's a little difficult to turn in. I also had a conversation with the tree guys immediately okay. before this meeting. Okay. So it's going to be remedied okay. very quickly. I know we couldn't figure out, because I live at the mobile home park, or sure. the senior mobile home park. So I, un, you know, I understand everything that's going on, except that I don't know if anybody contacted the park, because we didn't hear anything about this, and I only found out what was going on because she got a letter and she lives on Douglas. Okay. So um, I don't know if anybody has contacted the park to let them know. Right. So the question was, was the mobile home park contacted? Sarah, I think you can help me answer this, but I know that was one of our recipients that we were sending the postcard to, right? I do believe they, they, that was within the limits. Right. So we sent them the postcard for the mobile home park. Whether they sent it out to their mobile homes in the park, right. I don't know. Did it go out of state? Because the owners are out of state. Uh, it probably did. We sent the letters to both the property owner and whoever was living at the property. I do know we got some letters back. It could just be that um, a number was off in our okay. system, so I apologize if you didn't okay, get a letter. That's okay. I'll check with the office to make sure, you know, because nothing has been mentioned to, mm. as far as I know, to the residents yeah. that mm. this is all going to be happening. So, okay. okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, my understanding from what I've heard is that 
next year's project on Douglas is going to give a uh, wider paved shoulder, but this year's project on Barney is going to give us a gravel shoulder. So the, que the question know. is uh, about the shoulder, there will be paved shoulder on Douglas. Douglas, and what kind of shoulder will be forthcoming on Barney? Um, actually both. So there will be a paved shoulder on Barney, as well as a gravel shoulder. Uh, Bart, you might have helped me out with the specifics here, but I think we are targeting a three foot paved and three foot gravel. So total of six feet, that's fairly standard for the county, um, but it will have a three foot paved section outside the white line, okay. and then the three that's foot gravel. That's important as a, uh, an ex-officer of the Kelmser Bike Club and as a bicycler myself, mm -hmm. I do long distance bicycling, and coming down Barney with less than a full 36 inches. I ride a recumbent trike that's a 32 inch wheelbase and that doesn't give you a lot of room to keep out of traffic. The majority of it is three foot paved. Majority? Gravel. There's a transition zone. I know we will have the valley gutter at some point but we should have between the valley gutter and the white line three feet. That was the intent. When I say consistent, we're trying to make a consistent three foot paved shoulder the whole way. Okay, I know so right now it jogs in. It's going to be three foot flat and then there's going to be a little yeah. before you hit the gravel. Yes, That's fine. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's hard on no. Barney because some of it's right at the edge of the the ditch. The ditch there, and it's yes. a big ditch. And we, that's, we have, we do, the question was, uh, there is a ditch right along the road. Yes, there is. And that is why we have some time for excavation built in here. We're going to have some digging. And uh, part of that widening. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty hairy there. Yes. And yeah, there's some steep banks right there. Yep. <laughs> yes, there are. Next year at Douglas, <laughs> because this year I'm going to use Barney, I I'm going to use uh, Nichols to Ravine to Douglas to get to Martin Mossel to go to work at Parchment on G yeah. Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's too bad. Yeah. So if you'll have that cleared out by the time, if I have a driver's license next to a, a week from today, that'll be another thing. <laughs> I have a city cop following me on Bob, what do you call it, Vine Street, because I didn't do anything about a bicyclist there, and I thought he was going to take me, follow me, almost to where I went there, to agree to work in a place that wouldn't want to work from the Bible looking at it. And I told him, I don't want to work in that place. But that was the whole thing. The city council followed me because it didn't do anything about the bicycle there. And you were the one who told the city commission that people that it's going to cause problems small roads, not Western, just small roads. That's going to cause a problem. And I've been telling people sooner or later they're going to take me for that. Any other questions? Yes. Do you know, is there going to be a light at Nichols and uh, Ravine? Not at this time, no. The question was, is there going to be a light traffic signal at the corner of Nichols and Ravine? No, not at this time. Okay. Do you know why that is? <laughs> I just, I, I, I live on Barney right by there, not sure how many accidents oh, there have yeah. been yep. there. Yeah, we, we've bikes. had a good number of them that go through the intersection, and yeah. uh, we, I'm glad we, I don't own the house. I don't know. I hope that no one's oh. here that owns the house on the other side. Oh, and, and Barney, yeah. and, Barney and Nichols, that's Yeah, that's yeah. a good spot and, for a traffic circle. Yes, it would. <laughs> we will, we'll keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> no, at this time, uh, the question was, I don't know if I phrased it for the camera, but the question was, are we going to put a traffic signal at, I'm sorry, i got to keep my road straighter, Nichols and Barney. Um, no, we are not. A traffic signal is warranted based upon the amount of traffic going through there and sometimes based upon the crash history. Um, preventable crash. Um, if there was a lot of T-boning accidents, that may be a different matter. But at this time, no, it is not on the list for a signal. We are keeping an eye on it. It is on our <coughs> short list every year. Every year we do a safety review. Uh, I do, and this year we just finished that again. We look for potential projects to improve safety, and it's, it's always one that we kind of keep an eye on because we're aware of it. Um, it. At this time, it is not getting a signal. Is, is yes, that sir. answer in relation to the recycling plant that is being put right on that corner. And uh, yeah. All the, I mean, yeah. I think they said 60 to 100 trucks a day coming through there. And the recycling plant, I think, is down at Ravine and Nichols. 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 So 
The one I'm talking about is Nichols and Barney, right? I so thought you were talking Nichols and Barney. There was we both. I'm sorry. Oh, maybe yeah, I got confused. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We, we, have, uh, we have had discussion about uh, Ravine and Nichols before. Um, I know that one, sir, was floated as a roundabout. Um, I may have you there. I may have brought that up before you got to me tonight. But uh, you might owe me the $5. Um, that one we, we have, we are, we are watching it. At this time, we are not looking to put a signal there. We are monitoring it for potential signal or roundabout in the future, if so needed. Do you know if Nichols will return to 35 miles per hour? Um, is Nichols going to return to 34 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour? Uh, at this time, no. Uh, the state police are the ones that assist with setting the speed limits. They've done their study. They found it's going to be 45. Um, but they did the study during COVID. When everything was closed down. I, I think we can, we can... Can I step in quick? Yes. I know there's yeah. some other questions. Can we stick to questions of the project? On the project, and then we can so come back to this later. Afterwards, we can okay. come back to other stuff. So you know, we're, we'll, we're more than happy to talk about it. Just want to make sure people have questions about the project. Yeah. All right, so gentlemen in the blue yes. coat, you've been waiting for a while. Yeah, um, I got quite a few questions. Um, the first one was, you're going to move the mailboxes yes. on uh, Barney Road. Yes. Um, I think you're going to let us all know when they're yes. going to move. Are you moving them back? Yes. Yes, of course. We will we will we will uh, the original restaurant the original Correct, part. correct. We will put them all right back where where they belong at the end of the job. Can you rephrase uh, the question? I'm sorry. Nope. I will rephrase the question. The question was, uh, will mailboxes be moved and will they be put back? Yes, they will be put put, put back after the project. You'll even get a brand new post out of the deal. So they'll be on a brand new post um, and they'll be put right back where they were. Um, next question. Um, so you said that the storm drains were going to help alleviate some of the ponding that is occurring on Barney Road. Um, this is kind of a two-part question. With that being said, are you specifically targeting those areas that are developing the ponding, or are you just kind of putting something in and expecting it to resolve the situation? Uh, the question was, with the storm sewer improvements, are we looking to, if I'm understand, correct me if I'm wrong, are we trying to fix the whole system or is it just a piece or part that's not working here and there? Yeah, so are we trying to fix the road along with the ponding or are we just putting in new storm drains and expecting it to resolve the ponding and all the areas? No, um, Bart, you're gonna have to help me out with this one again too, but I recall that we are using a open jointed pipe in this situation. Um, the end closer to Nichols. Yes. yes. So as one of the improvements for the storm sewer, we are going to be using an open jointed pipe. It's very similar to what we've done in Nichols. We also did it in Riverview and Parchment uh, some years ago. And it allows the water to seep out naturally as it's flowing down the pipe. This means less outflow at the end of the pipe, but also it reduces the amount of water standing in the pipes. So we are hopeful that with the gravel and the sand that's out here, it should drain relatively well. Uh, there's a lot of gravel pits, things tend to drain. So we're hopeful that these improvements will result in less ponding on the road. We've also had some structures that are a little bit broken down. Uh, they just generally need repair, They're starting to collapse. Um, next question. Um, is the elevation of the road going to change from what it is now? So let's say the road is at zero, is it going to decrease by inches or increase by inches? Because that would result in more ponding in a Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, the question was, is the road going to raise or lower in elevation throughout the course of this work? I believe no, it will stay about the same. Um, when we mill it, we're going to take, I think it's two inches off, and we're going to put two inches back. So. And I have one more question. Yeah. How much of our yards are we going to lose in our driveway? Are in this project? Um, question was how much yard or driveways will be lost to this project. I think that depends a little bit, um, but depending on your driveway, we're going to try to carry it back to a point that makes sense. Um, if you have a concrete driveway, we're going to take it back to a joint. If you don't, we'll try to take it back, I think generally to the right of way is where we're targeting. So about 33 feet from the center line of the road. That's the road right away that we have to work with without going after an easement from you. Um, 
as far as the seating and the restoration for the yards and the ditching, if there's ditching, I don't think there's much ditching, um, that will all be contained within that 33 feet as well. So we will try to minimize as much as possible. We don't, you know, I don't want to go out and rip up every, everybody's yard if we don't have to. So we're only touching where we do. And if, if you have a specific site in mind, I'd be more than happy. And with HRC here, we got plans. We can take a look at your exact lot and figure out what the impacts will be. I would really like that because we're having a lot of all those issues that I'm mentioning right now in, yep. in front of our driveway. Yep. Okay, I, I want the same thing. Okay. Yeah, we have uh, multiple plant sets and multiple folks. We'll be around here for a while, so you can certainly grab any of us and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. That's what my question was. I just put all new stone down okay. before the winter set in. And um, because you're going to be taking part of my drive, can I request you to put um, this cementer or the blacktop at the end? I, My particular driveway has a lot of turnaround. <clears throat> People said, oops, I went too far. A concept. I swear to God, I at least 14 today. But that's probably because of all the work, but I get a lot of it. And I mean, that would definitely help me in the financial, in the years to come. So the question was, uh, if you could request having your driveway upgraded to a concrete Correct. or an asphalt drive, if it currently is gravel now, right? Yes. Uh, I think generally speaking, Bart, we're replacing in kind with what's out there. Now there may be some situations otherwise, um, generally speaking, if your driveway is at a very steep slope and we feel that we are going to cause water to erode your driveway, and it's I think no, gen won't generally 4% is that cutoff, I do believe. Um, certainly see us afterward, and we will work with you on figuring out what's in store for your particular driveway. Okay. But we do try to replace in kind. Okay. Yes, sir. Back to the shoulders. <laughs> um, how far down are you going to be digging? before replacing these shoulders or extending them slightly. Because I've been on this road since 1980 and watched the shoulders disintegrate over and over again. So the question was how far down are we going to go for the shoulders and for the widening on those areas. Bart, can you help me out with this? I think we are targeting an eight inch aggregate and then six inches of asphalt. Yes, six inch asphalt. Um, eight inch aggregate and then in the areas 24 inches of sand as well. Yeah. So I mean, if your concern is that we're just overlaying over some of the existing HMA. Well, my concern sure is that. the frost level and heaving and the edge breaking up and me having to go around them constantly into the traffic. Yeah, sir, so this, ro this road will be built to our normal road standards, so we will be giving you a full depth section. Yes, sir. I, um, I own a piece of uh, barn that, um, uh, let's see, it's just east of the bridge, and we have we have the part of the ravine, okay. that big ravine down there. That's I, You guys are replacing the culvert in that, I understand. <laughs> Could you describe what's going to go on? Yes, there? yes. So the question was, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to describe this. I think it's east of the trailer park and east of uh, 131 overpass. Yes. Uh, there is a deep ravine right there, and... Uh, it's very deteriorated and it's kind of sloughing off to the north. Um, what are we going to be doing in that particular area? We will be, that's one of those instances where we're going to, you don't have to go back to it. Okay. It's, we're going to put in a full tube across. So to drain one side to the other, make sure that there's, if there's water, it can get across. We will be putting in brand new guardrail. There's a guardrail out there now. And we are going to, when we're putting in that pipe, we're going to be working quite deep. Yeah, so that, pipe's 20 feet down from yeah. the surface. So we're going to tear out everything that's there, and we're going to put it all back. It's going to be a very, very loud, loud is the word you're looking for. <laughs> I was going to go with interesting, but yeah, that works too. <laughs> loud, <laughs> sure. So yes, uh, that'll be one of those instances that will take some time that the road will be physically closed, and I would highly recommend you not try to get through on that day or that week. Um, you know how long it's going to be shut down like that? I don't know the particulars of how long that part that location will take. Uh, I know we've tried to stipulate to the contractor we want to try to keep everything to a four-week period of closure. So if there's storm sewer or anything culverts, four weeks to try to get it done. Um, that is the goal. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, is there going to be a no-passing lines again still? 
I mean, they, st they do it anyhow. But. Yeah. Um, question was, will there be no passing line? Uh, I believe everything will be put back exactly as it is today. We're not changing any of the curves in the road, up and down, the vertical curves. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the no passing zones will stay as is. Whether people abide by them, that's obviously up for discussion, but uh, everything will be put back as mm -hmm. is. Yes, ma'am. Do you know if there will be any extra signage on days where like, you can't get through at all? Like, where I just have a hill and sometimes I'll be almost to my house and like, have to go back all the way, like five minutes around? Extra well, signage? yeah, so the question was will there be extra signage or communication, I suppose, right? With the residents if there's a day when there's going to be a full closure. Um, Bart, Eric, I know in the past we've reached out to folks as these things happen we try to knock on doors if need if we can um, we try there is our CKC connect um, that is a way that you could be contacted as well but we, we will try to have a physical presence out there I think we've got three inspectors right now so you should be able to flag somebody down and they should be able to flag you down so we will try to stay ahead of it as much as possible and let you know when those major changes are happening the big tube you're referring to is probably gonna be the biggest one and uh, we'll try to let folks know that that's coming. Yes, ma'am. Do you anticipate that, will that closure to be when school is still in session, with the school bus going through, it was a little problematic? Yeah, yeah, I believe that. Uh, the question was, are we going to try to, we're hoping, the uh, uh, question was, are we going to have the road closed while school is in session? I'm trying to recall back to my timeline that I got in there, but I think they had storm sewer down for, Mid-April. Mid-April, early May. So that very well might impact school so at that like time. Like a full month, like there'd be no busing down Barney? That is, we are trying to minimize it to a month, yes. Wow. We are trying to stay out of the beginning of next year. That is that is one of our main goals here. We're trying to have this would wrapped half, up by would September. Would half of it be open if they came up and turned around the front and came back? Or is like the whole thing shut down? No, we, uh, the, I can't very well, the question was, are we going to leave half open? Um, we can't very well do one storm sewer over here and the other one down here. The people in the middle will not be able to get out. So we're going to have to provide some way for folks to get in and out of their houses. So we aren't going to be working, I don't think, on both sides at once. We will make sure that there's access. It just won't be the, the situation here will be that you just can't get the bus through the project. So in, in situations like that, do the school buses normally still do normal pickups and they deal with the closure and terminate each end? Uh, Eric Bart, do you remember how this worked out in Nichols? Because we had the same kind of thing there. I know we, we work with the Don't. busing. We, we let them know. The so you do contact PBS We do. And, and Metro Bus as well. If they got routes up here, they'll be notified as well. I mean, they were notified, but they saw the sign and they still try to figure it out. I mean, they... Yeah, once you know, this this tree work is a little bit unique in that it uh, it's a little bit outside the project, but with the actual project, the storm sewer, these guys here will be reaching out to the bus, to the schools, calling them up. We'll be on the phone with them, making sure that we're but in how step. Much notice, because like they called me when my kids on the bus saying we're dropping them off at second CRC <laughs> without any notice. Like, how much am I going to have the night before notice? I, need a I would hope not. Yeah. So the question was how much notice. I, I think once we get an actual schedule from the contractor, we're going to be reaching out to folks. That'll be mailboxes. You'll start hearing about mailboxes, where those are going to go. And the busing, we'll be reaching out to folks at that time. And police, fire, EMS, too. And I think, you know, as we switch stages, um, it's three to five days. I forget exactly what we called for, but there'll be advance notice to us, and then we'll be passing that along. Any other questions? Yeah. I'll just repeat what Bart oh, said. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so he was saying that there would be three to five days notice from when the contractor lets us know they're going to be doing work that we can pass on to residents and schools and so forth. Yes, sir. On the drainage uh, project, will that also include um, work on the drywall or the drainage system that's supposed to drain the what turns into a lake at the at Bonnie Road? I live right in front of that house, so I have to go out there periodically with a shovel and try and empty that storm drain to 
get it to drain? Will that include any work to that drywall, cleaning it out, replacing any of that? Question was, um, will the storm sewer work affect a drywall and replacement of it? I guess I'd need to be exactly sure which one we're talking about. I know a good number of them are being replaced because they are falling into disrepair. I would suggest that afterward maybe you circle up with us and we can take a look at the plans and see exactly which one you're referring to. In the back, ma'am? In regards to this tree work that's yes. been done. Okay, now they took down the tree in front of my house. Yes. They were supposed to leave chips, but they left big pieces of wood. Are they going to get rid of that wood? Because I did not want that. So the question was with the tree work, um, will they remove the big pieces of wood? The uh, chips were requested. That is something I'm going to have to follow up on. I know in advance of these projects, when we cut trees, we try to seek what the property owner wants done with the wood. Uh, generally, there's a form that goes out and hopefully yeah, filled it out, out and we can then pull it up and we can see if we did the right, hopefully the right thing. And uh, uh, yes, if you ask for chips, you should have gotten chips. They may not be done like that. That's true. If, if it's still being cut, I guess maybe they might be chipping it on Friday. So maybe they're still... They might come in later and so do all the chipping at one time. The wood there. They're getting rid of them, right? We can always follow yeah, up with the contractor. We will, we will follow up and make sure something happens <laughs> to the wood. Thanks. <laughs> 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 you guys see how big that is? <laughs> Thanks. I might need all your saws. <laughs> Thank you. All right, any Are further there any questions? questions or? When is Bondi Road going to be closed? 7.30 in the morning I start out for work. And when is it going to be closed then? I, the question was, when will Barney Road be closed, 7.30 or what time of day? I don't have those details as of yet. Okay. Um, once we get a contractor scheduled, we can better address that. But right now, I, I'm sorry, I do not have those particular details. Well, that's when I start out for work when school is closed. And, and I think it's June 10th is my last day for the summer. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I don't recall the form about the, form. the trees. How do I get a form? Uh, Were there trees cut down in oh, your property? Yes, yes, and I'm assuming you're taking the stumps out as well? Yes. Uh, question. Uh, one of the residents two did questions. not get... Yeah, two questions. Yeah. One of the residents did not get a form, so can we get a form? And also, um, will the stumps be removed? Yes, the stumps will be removed. Those will be done via the project with Peters. Okay. Um, so that'll happen as we start rolling into the project. Uh, right now we're just cutting the trees to get them out of there before bat season ends mm -hmm. and we have to worry about that. So as far as the form, I can check with our forester and see what can be done. I know the forms did go out, whether it was received or not, I'd have to, I'd have to figure out the details there. But if you can give me your name and number, I'll try to follow up with you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question. Um, <laughs> and it, due to the erosion and everything from where I live in front of that lake, um, over the years, the ground underneath where my approach is has sunken in, so my car vehicles bottom out every time we go in and out. When you replace, if that work in plate, you're going to replace the approaches to the driveways. Yes. Will you grade that up where it used to be so I, it's more level? I mean, it, it, it's sunken in. So the question was, uh, residents' driveway has sunken in where the flooding uh, ponding is occurring, right? Um, Yes, we, we are going to replace the driveway approaches right there. We're going to be replacing, if it's the curb and gutter section, we will be replacing the curb and gutter. I think actually it will be replaced with a asphalt curb and gutter rather than a concrete curb and gutter. So a little bit of a change there for you, but we will make sure that there is not a significant dip. Okay, and then one other question with that. Will you re, um, uh, resurface the lawns, everything yes. that has ripped up? Will the upper be made to make sure that they're back at the same grade that they were previously? And I ask that because you're, uh, about 10, 12 years ago when the drywall, that drywall was installed, they ripped up half my lawn, and then when they replaced it, if there's about a three inch of a drop, I notice every time I mow. Mm -hmm. uh, the question was, will we replace yards back to proper elevation such that there's not uh, tracking or any other depressions in your yard that would cause? Or do they raise the dirt a little bit knowing that it's gonna settle back down so it can settle even with what was pre-existing? We, we will try to set it to an elevation that's mobile and uh, not leave you with a depressed area if that means we need to fluff it up initially. We do carry these projects open to the following year, so if it doesn't perform and if seed doesn't take or if it does start to sink, we can try to address those until 
June of next year. Yeah, if you see something in the late fall mm -hmm. that's not quite right. Please let us know. Yeah, okay. get, put in a service request. We can come out, look at it, and then have the contractor touch it up in the spring. All right. So, Jim, yes. um, just real quick, I'm Joanna Johnson um, with the Road Commission as well. And earlier there was a question, and maybe you could repeat it for me, okay. um, or the answer to it, related okay. to the city of Kalamazoo and what number do you call? So oh, Jim, yes. Jim so was correct. Um, for those that are within the city limits, you would call that 311. And for others, if you have issues related to city roads, the number is 269-337-8000. 269-337-8000. That's for the city of Kalamazoo, not the Road Commission, but I just wanted to answer that question earlier. And then I know Rebecca and Jim and our team um, already shared this, but I'm going to ask them to share it again. Highly, highly recommend that you sign up for RCKC Connect. The schools are on that, the law enforcement's on that, you know, uh, first responders, etc. If you want to know um, and get an update delivered right to you, call you on the phone, text you, email, et cetera, please, please sign up for RCKC Connect. Thank you. All right, if there are any other, oh, okay. one more. <laughs> Just, uh, you were talking about reseeding where the lawns are, et cetera, are torn up. Uh, what if we have ivy there? My whole front is ivy. I, I think the question was if we reseed the yard area um, and it is currently ivy, <laughs> what would we put back? I think we would generally default back to our roadside mix, which is kind of a wildflower blend. Can you guys? Correct. Okay. If it's if it's um, if it's more of that nature, yes, you'd get the roadside blend. If it was a manicured yard or a nice yard, we would try to put back a seed like a yard seed if you don't want the roadside blend we could probably have that discussion with you if need be okay. all right thank you so if you got further questions please feel free to grab one of us we'll be around here we got plans we can talk further thank, thank you. you thank you all for coming thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.